Hey, it's Jay and Corey from Two Dudes Reviews, and we're hanging out here with uh, Sherry Fitzpatrick, the uh, the one and only. When you hear about Sherry's Berries, the legend right here. Uh, how in the world did you get into the whole Airbnb thing? It seems like an interesting departure. I know. I uh, it is a new, brand new project. I've always had. It's. An, I'm a dreamer. Okay. And I've had a dream since I was in my 20s and stayed at my first B&B uh, in Napa. Okay, yeah. And I guess I kind of parked huh? it in the back of my mind someday I would do that. You know, I figured when I was, you know, old and lonesome and this and that. <laughs> and I got old and lonesome quicker, I guess, than I thought I would. We live up here uh, for 15 years. My husband and I, Clay, we raised our sons, our three sons up here. Um, they were all born and down in Sacramento. We're about an hour above Sacramento. So did the kids all grow up in this house? They did. Oh, gorgeous mm-hmm. place. And of course, yes. pool in the backyard. Now, your husband's a pool maker, the- yeah? Yes. Okay. Uh, we scored on this house that wasn't finished, and uh, it was exactly, I had a list of the 15 perfect things my dream house would have, and it yeah, had all of them. Um, yeah, just so fun. It, we've got 5,000 square feet on five quiet acres, and our guests have full use of our property and you know the fire pit i think you guys enjoyed the fire pit a little oh yeah a little a little too late last night it was great a great great conversation and you guys have been such amazing hospitable hosts i mean obviously we arrive here and it's uh and it's a tray full of delicious berries right and uh, mimosas in the Beta morning berries. yeah berries. and uh and then the Beauty. outdoor kitchen and the barbecue mm-hmm. last night and just amazing yeah. hosts so if you're in the area i'm going to put the link to uh how to, how to find your place. Are, okay. are you on Airbnb? Because when I well, was looking you know, last week, I was like, oh, what happened to the pictures? Well, you know, this is actually, this project is actually a ministry of, that I'm starting. And, you know, this is our home and our pro- our property. And I kind of like to control who stays here. And so when you stay here at our um, B&B, it's actually supporting my ministry, which is another B&B called Boys and Berries. Okay. My Tell mantra me is, about that. all my yeah. boys grew up and left me, so I went and got me some new ones. <laughs> <laughs> but we actually put the house on it's the market. It's lonely thing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a quiet husband, so it's a it's a lonesome life up here in the country. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I... Um, I'm actually doing a leadership program at William Jessup University, and it's the content is this massage my heart. I um, won't go into detail here, but I have a long history in Puerto Vallarta. I love the Spanish culture, the Spanish language, the people. And a year or so ago, I, I learned that there was some children that lived actually in the dump. And it broke my heart, and I want to see it for myself. So I went on a discovery trip. God hooked me up hit the ground running first day my whole first week I got in touch with people started supporting families I love that it's just 100% goes to the kids to give them a better life so I'm letting people sleep in my empty boys bedrooms to support kids that don't have a room yeah wow that's awesome yeah Mm -hmm. um so you're a published author yes tell me about you know it's every mother's day every valentine's Valentine's. day you know you you always hear the commercials about sherry's berries but uh, sherry's berries now is not controlled by you anymore you're now doing buried in chocolate tell me about you know how sherry's berries started and Mm -hmm. why you're no longer involved which seems surprising right right well um i was destined to sell strawberries for a living. I grew up in a small town in Southern Oregon, Oregon called Klamath Falls. Okay. My dad always had a big garden which included a strawberry patch for me and that's where my love affair with strawberries began. I just loved them. And uh, years later, uh, after I graduated from high school, actually I have a picture of me and my boyfriend, this guy named Clay Fitzpatrick that I was madly in love with, you know, and mm-hmm. I always tell the girls I would have married him great that guy. day. He's guy. Yeah, he's yeah. a lot of fun. He's a guy's guy. The guys oh yeah, love yeah, him. yeah. We had a great talk he, last night. Yeah, he's a huge asset to the property too. He's a quiet guy doesn't say much but you get on a topic he's enjoyed with and he's a nice trinket for the property uh-huh. <laughs> when he comes out you know but anyways so um i would have married him that day but god was going to teach me you know all about patience <laughs> and I actually wait for 10 years so great picture by the way yeah, yeah so when i was 20 um, my older brother had a mortgage company in los angeles and he invited me to come to la and work for him. Mortgage rates had just gone down. It was a real busy time. And I always wanted to be a California girl. Yeah, of course. So I couldn't pack fast enough. And I came, um, went to Los Angeles for four and a half years. I was a mortgage broker for his company there. And that's when I learned to take my beloved strawberries and dip them in chocolate and make gourmet gift baskets. And that was my signature gift as I marketed my mortgage loans to real estate agents in Los Angeles. And at that point was, I mean, 
were people already doing chocolate dipped strawberries and you were just one of many? Or? Well, they've been dipping strawberries in fancy hotels long before I was even born. Okay. But it was okay. always just a confection. It was never a gift. And so after four and a half years uh, in um, – in Los Angeles, I went to Puerto Vallarta and lived on the beach and sold timeshares for a few months to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. I actually moved to Reno. Okay. I yeah. was a little homesick, mm-hmm. uh, a little closer to home. It's only four hours up to Klamath from Reno, and I knew I'd get a lot of visitors, what people want to come see me there, and I actually became a stockbroker there. Okay. I thought you had to work wow. with, um, have a prestigious job title, make really big money <laughs> to find success and be successful. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think just as life, you know, you yeah. a lot, yeah, a lot of folks are certain searching after that power and that, you know, prestige and the title, right? Instead of Mm -hmm. thinking about what do you do on a day-to-day basis that makes you happiest and how can you give back, right? Yes, yes. And so, anyways, I um, continued to do my strawberries as I taught financial classes there. I got my Series 6 and 7. I was a stockbroker for Bateman Eichler at the time, uh, right downtown. And um, someone said to me, you mean you can make these things and do this? And you're doing this financial stuff? <laughs> yeah, this looks like so much fun. Light financial bu- stuff sounds light like bulb. Light bulb. Uh, light bulb. Uh, so, why don't um, people smile? Yeah, yeah, so I, I decided that Sacramento would be the perfect place for me to do my strawberry project in. Um, that old boyfriend of mine, Clay Fitzpatrick, had moved to Sacramento while mm-hmm. I was um, in L.A. And, and if, he, if you were able to pull him out here today, he'd tell you guys I was stalking him. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. <laughs> but it worked. So I got a, um, I got a fifteen hundred dollar cash advance on a local credit union, Safe Credit Union, and uh, my one bedroom apartment. For the first four years I was here, single woman, Clay and I were started dating again. We were both very independent people, and uh, I think I gave away more strawberries the first year than I sold. But um, I really had my work cut out for me because people had never given strawberries as a gift before, right. and they're like, "You do what?" And so I'd have to keep explaining. I thought, well, maybe I could get my strawberries to look like roses. Okay. You know, That's cool like idea. flowers somehow. Mm-hmm. And then people would understand it better. You know, you give us a call, put a little message card, and we deliver it, something nice. And then people started catching on. And um, so I actually got a patent on my strawberry rose bouquet. And then years later, as we did our national rollout, it was a signature gift as well. Wow. Yeah. So I had these really great systems. I'd, um, uh, you know, Valentine's is always a really big we do like a third of our annual volume in two days kind of wow. thing. Just really crazy nut stuff. And and so I always want to have something new so we get a lot of, you know, publicity and press out of it. And so one year I created a two dozen rose bouquet. It was like five feet long, weighed about twenty pounds. Yeah. And I remember coming out to my <laughs> came out to my employees with the first prototype and said, We're gonna call this the yes bouquet. Man. Whatever the his question is, if he gets this for her for Valentine's the answer is yes. <laughs> and then another year I heard, um, you know, the internet was coming around and the women started getting unhappy that their flowers seemed to die so quickly. Yeah. So next year I did a press release to tell the guys, if you get her my strawberry roses, you know, they look p- pretty like flowers, but she can eat them too. And she can wear around on her hips for like th- three months or so, you know, <laughs> last a lot longer and started doing a lot of new, pro- like my new car. I don't know that's a selling point, Sherry. <laughs> they rethink that idea, yeah. but uh, sure. I know, it's fun. I know, I know. And then just, to, you know, my caramel apple wedges, my son named them, you know, wedgies, best, you know wedgie you'll ever have and had a lot of fun you know did i'm game show queen and yeah. willie comes Hanging to town and Nelson. we ended Oprah. up being one of oprah's favorites and that was fun and clay and i got married when the company was in its fourth year and we started having boys and- how tough was it to scale up going from an apartment and doing berries just in reno mm-hmm. to be able to scale that up and have something mm-hmm. that's nash i mean I, there had to be a point where you went oh my god i've got way too many orders and i can't there's not enough hours in the day to yeah. make enough mm-hmm. strawberries to fill all this stuff. How'd well, you do it? That's when supply and demand starts kicking in too because we're sold out. You can't yeah. get them. The line's out the door. So it was really um, about branding. I'm a living brand and so forth. And I'm not afraid of hard work. I like to be creative. I'm totally into customer service, putting out top, top. I'd rather sell fewer, really expensive, awesome, beautiful, perfect packages than a whole bunch of junk. And, right. you know, you have a different clientele. And I mean, like, Nordstrom's and Walmart both sell men's t-shirts, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But or, but they're different. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. They're different. So the it kind of went that route. So yeah. 
Yeah, so when my business, um, there's my son Hogan, always, you know, I think balance and success, the boys came to work a lot with us, and um, I became a Christian early in um, my business career, and I was so grateful that at a young age, and my boys were little, I learned the importance of having our priorities in the right order. Right. My faith has always come first, and then my family, and then work. Um, my pastor once told me he's never you know, talk to anybody on their deathbed saying they wish they would have spent more time at the office. And I never forgot yeah. that. So mm-hmm. and they did grow up. This is a thing I did with Alec Baldwin and, and Paxton. But, um, I, when my business was in its ninth year, I was overwhelmed. I had two little boys, a third one on the way, two stores, a factory, and there was this <sighs> brand new thing called the internet. Mm-hmm. And I'm a berry with a click. I'm a berry dipper. I'm not a tech girl. And I was so excited when I was approached by, by a young, entrepreneurial, tech-minded lawyer that promised me the deal of a lifetime. I went in all immediately. I was, without doing my due diligence, I was so excited oh, to have no. a partner. I didn't know I was supposed to get my own lawyer. I thought he was my lawyer. And it took me about a year to realize I f- trust the wrong person. Hmm. And over the next 10 years and the dot gone eras and the board of directors, I spent more time in the boardroom than the invention room. And it was horrible. Yeah. And all the fun went away and I lost control of the company. And about eight years ago, the company was sold off for pennies on the dollar to the CEO they brought in, did a deal with Pro Flowers if they keep him and give him a big salary. It, and that, it just boggles the mind how that can work. And I'm just way. this dip, you know, berry dipper from Southern Oregon that likes to be creative and work hard and put out, you know, and overnight, 22 years of blood, sweat, and tears was just gone. Wow. That'd be like losing a child. I grieved it like I lost one of my boys. Yeah. It broke me. So, okay, broke so me. when you hear the advertisements for Sherry's Berries now, does it That's tweak the, you out? It, no, I'm over it. It's like an okay. old boyfriend kind of over it. But I am inundated with all of their customer service issues. So I know that yeah. their product is nothing like mine. It's mass produced on machine. It's not mm-hmm. fresh. It's not quality, especially around the holidays, Valentine's yeah. and Mother's Day, Christmas. They're just, you know, the packaging. Anyway. No sour grapes, but I did have to move on. Yeah. And I was grateful. You know, it took me several years, and now I'm kind of, I've been dormant a little bit, trying to figure out what now, what to do with the rest of my life. And, you know, living up here in the wine country, um, we have had some, um, have a lot of friends. Yeah. With wineries. Yeah. And when in Rome... Mm-hmm. When in Rome, they encouraged me <laughs> to have my own wine label. Okay, so, let's check that um, out. So today we have um, Sherry's Grand Reserve wine. Okay, it's a big ass wine. Can yeah, you tell? yeah, big big bol- s wine. Yeah. <laughs> big bold, amazing, award winning wines that Nello Olivo, um, where we met right um, a few months ago, uh, makes for me. And then of course I dip everything in chocolate. Okay. I've had so, a lot of radio guys say, can you dip me in chocolate? <laughs> they thought that would be good. But You know, those creepy radio guys. I'm not one freaks. of them. Anyway, I'm, I just have a love anyway, for music there's a and price ended for up everything, in radio. Yeah. But, so then my wine is dipped in chocolate too. Okay. It zips off and there's directions and you eat the chocolate like on my strawberries with the oh, wine. You instantly yeah. pair it. And that you can wake cool. up with a cavity and a hangover at the same time. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> When you said there's directions, you mean there's instructions on how to yeah, break the chocolate off? Yeah, on the back, off? there's directions, and there's a pull tab. See the gold okay. pull tab? Yep. Yeah, okay. And it's perforated yep. down, and it unzips, and a big cast comes out. It's like an interactive ball of wine. Yeah. We ship everything on my new website at, at Buried in Chocolate, um, which is the title of my book. Um, yeah, we ship everything nationwide. And so you can wake up, yeah, cavity and hangover at the same time with that. Yeah. So having fun again. Try to remember life is short. Have your yes. priorities in the right order. Mm-hmm. Love my, you know, having a good time. Um, again, my book was published, um, Buried in Chocolate, after I lost the company. Yeah. I, um, I got a book deal with Pelican. And it was then I started taking my speaking more seriously. I'm going to say you're a motivational speaker as well who yes, travels around that's my the main, world. That's, that's my main career these days and objective is um, – I am a, uh, an accredited member of the National Speaking Association, and okay. I travel internationally, entertaining audiences um, by the thousands to follow their dreams, never give up, yeah, and uh, do what you love. Mm-hmm. And and then 
It was just a matter of time before I started dipping my book in chocolate. <laughs> so my book Perfect. is trademarked, the yeah. first book in the world with calories. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, the chocolate breaks off. The That's book's great. double shrink wrapped. People goes, you ruined it. Uh -huh. yeah. It's no. double shrink wrapped. Comes with directions. They have an eight month um, shelf life. You just treat them like a candy bar, and the reader can eat my chocolate. Okay, is story. there any secret on the actual chocolate that you're melting down? Is it a special blend? It Do you have is. somebody and who I, makes the it's chocolate? It's like a whole for Colonel Sanders thing. I can't. Okay. Yeah. But it's the original. Yeah, so, yeah, I'd be done. <laughs> people order Sherry's berries, and they're upset with the product or the customer service. And they come after me, you know. And so one at a time, I try to let them know, you know, that I understand more than anybody. Oh, yeah. You the understand. problem. Yeah, you understand. And, um, you know, because the thing, for 22 years, I crammed Sherry's Berries in everybody's head, sent out the best amazing products possible. And, and when you send a gift, you don't see what your recipient's getting and they don't want to tell you oh thanks for sending me the fake ones right yeah the, the mushy berries yeah <laughs> I, I have to say my husband oh, yeah, bruises all over uh -huh. them. <laughs> my husband calls them larry's berries i sent i sent my mother-in-law a box of quote-unquote sherry's berries this past mother's day oh no um, and not only did they not get there on the right date they got there on monday and it was 86 degrees and raining and so the box was left on the patio in the rain all day long. By the time she actually opened them up, the chocolate had melted. It just looked like something you would not want to eat. Yeah. They took care of it within two days. I had to make a phone call, but mm -hmm. not really the, uh, the quality that I remember because I had ordered Sherry's Berries when, you know, initially back in Reno because, you know, mm -hmm. we would hear about it all the time. My, and my mom had sent my wife uh, uh, a package of Sherry's Berries years and years and years ago so on Mother's Day. Yes. So my mom had sent them to my wife and they uh -huh. were fantastic. It was just a little bouquet with a little, you know, it, yes. was, it was nice. Yeah. yeah, nice. it was nice. Nice, good. Yes. Well, congratulations on everything and, and making it through and making a difference and giving back to people. Um, you know, you guys have got a wonderful place here and, and I admire your, uh, your intelligence and bravery to go out and take on some of these endeavors that you've done. Um, and thank you again for allowing us to come into your place. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank, thank you. Thank you for giving back. That's wonderful. The charity is wonderful. Yes. Um, I think that that's a great cause. Mm -hmm. um, hats off to you. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Again, thank all the uh, all the info on how to, to to find all of Sherry's stuff is going to be here in the video or down in the description mm -hmm. below. I'm Jay. He's Corey. This is Sherry. Sherry the and real we're one. Two dudes reviews. <laughs>